What we do here is go back, 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 back. All right, this is the third episode of Games Time, a gamer's perspective. We are here today uh, with uh, two new guests joining us. Uh, Nabu. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> what's up, what's up? Yeah, yeah, please just introduce yourself, tell how you got into gaming. Oh, you want to tell my story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty long. By the Definitely. way, my name is Mansur Ahmed. I go in a in-game name as Nabu, and most of people from League Committee know me as Cookies. So I've been playing games from a young age, probably like when I was like seven or eight years old, and I got into competitive gaming, which is like a pro scene. When I think I was on my eleventh. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, what is the first game? Uh, the first competitive game I played was CS 1.6. So, okay. with, which was like a long back. So, I've, I've literally played all the competitive games professionally. Which is CS, then Dota. After that, I played League for like four years. And now I'm playing Overwatch. Nice, nice, nice. Another guest we have today, along with Nabu, is Life Smack. Dun, dun, dun. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, Life Swag. Please tell us about yourself and how you got into gaming. So my name is Anait Mirzoyan. Originally, I'm from the European gaming scene. Uh, my game name is Life Swag, but most people would know me as Kiba. Oh, okay. Nice. And okay. the games. I. Yeah, I'm originally from MMORPGs. Ah, okay. So Overwatch is my first MOBA slash FPS game. So, is it fair to call uh, Overwatch a TF2 clone? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's make a question for you. Yeah. So Kiba is from Naruto, right? Kibakuni. Yes. Ah, okay. Make I Naruto thought it didn't like again. Naruto. <laughs> no, Kiba just means fang, so it could be multiple animes. No, 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 it was from Naruto. Yeah, uh, she's a big oh, yeah. anime fan, so. All right, before we continue, I'll just let me tell tell you guys, you know, we have uh, Asura, uh, Goon, uh, Real Money, and uh, Radzi joining us today as well. That is again con- continuing from the last yes. episode. And in this episode, we are continuing our discussion on uh, Overwatch from last time. Uh, uh, Mac, w- what do you think about Overwatch as a game? It's a good game, but it still is in development. In the next couple of years, only then you can say if it will survive. Okay. So, uh, what, what problems, what grimes do you have with that game? Okay. Uh, the problem is, it's a bit of a chaotic game. So, a lot of people are just getting lost what exactly they're supposed to do there. Especially with such a big selection of heroes that they offer. Uh-huh. And everyone ends up trying everything and just reach quitting because nothing works (laughs) yeah (laughs) could relate to that (laughs) I mean I've not raised with myself but I've seen that happen (laughs) Uh, now what what, what are your thoughts on Overwatch I kind of agree with Anna but uh, I think that's only because it's a new game it's literally been like a year not even a year when they released it and there's already been a pro scene for it and you don't see that thing happening with a lot of the other games so that's one of the key factors and the downside of overwatch how it's gonna be turned out in the future okay okay see if you take league and uh, dota into consideration yeah they released the game and the pro scene was conducted like after like years of the game 
So with Overwatch, it started even before the beta system. Like okay. when the free release of beta system was, there was already tournaments by Gosu Gamers, and there was already a pro scene developed even before the game was released. Okay, 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 okay. Correct. Right, right. So, touching on the touching on the topic that we had uh, spoken about last episode, uh, what do you think about uh, Overwatch as a uh, go-to fun-to-play game? And then, uh, you're touching on the uh, competitive aspect of it. Who's 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 talking? Uh, Me? Any of okay. you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I'm asking the others if they want to pitch it. Uh, fun to play, yeah, Overwatch is a fun game. Like, the first game I played in Overwatch, I just said, okay, wait, can I use profanity? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I said, it. fuck League, I'm not playing that shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like, I played League of Legends for four, four to five years, and uh, I've literally been on a team which was, like, top in India, like, We've been on the leaderboard, we've been competing in the Singapore scene and we've been on top, right? So being on top and leaving the game is like something big. I played my first game of Overwatch and I didn't even know Overwatch existed. My One of my friends said it's on open beta, you can play it free to play, you can just download it. It's like some 3 to 4 GB and I played my first hero was Soldier, I said fuck it, I'm quitting League. So it's oh. a fun game but <laughs> for most of the new players what happens is when you buy a new account when you try to jump in into the quick play or whatever you get a lot of trolls and you can't help that but it's like a 50-50 thing where you can have fun and you can, can get annoyed by it yeah, yeah. I think uh, what really makes made a big difference for me was that uh, uh, I knew Ashwat before starting Overwatch and I started, uh, and I saw his videos and then I, then he gave me a kind of an intro and then he showed me around. So that got me really interested and I knew that it's a really good game. So Yeah, uh, that's the thing, no, like if you play with friends, any game would be fun. If you exactly. play it solo, it's gonna be, you know, hectic. <laughs> exactly. I don't know, and I, I liked it solo also. It's such a nice game. Yeah, it depends upon certain personalities too like if you are a solo player you always enjoy what you do and if you like playing with friends it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be even more funnier where you can troll around do whatever you want uh, with your friends that's why I think he calls yeah. you a lonely guy hey, I didn't say that <laughs> yeah, wow. I, am, I don't mind sometimes I am <laughs> and, uh, last one, what, what, what are your thoughts on uh, the competitive aspect and the fun to go play game well I'll start with the fun to go I right. I started playing Overwatch only because my friend decided to buy it for me so I would stop playing MMORPGs and waste my life. <laughs> okay. That didn't work out. Okay. In the end, I started playing Overwatch every day from morning to noon and from from morning to night. And nice. not in not in a good way. I started off as a diva main and my first game I dealt only 60 damage. <laughs> diva main, are you talking about IRL or like... In... <laughs> <laughs> so that's what funny, right? IRL you mean? take diva and you get only 60 damage for <laughs> real life. <laughs> <laughs> After which I just raged and started spamming Junkrat for two months. Oh, nice. That's the best way to raise, by the way. <laughs> Dude, I love Junkrat until Ashwat kept abusing him. Then I felt guilty for picking him all the time. <laughs> I've played him since then. Ashwat just likes to abuse you no matter what you play. <laughs> no, like any Junkrat player, he'll start cussing. This is back in one and all. So that's why I like, shit, okay, fine, I won't take Junkrat. <laughs> Oh my god. He's a lot of fun to play with. Oh, yeah, even Rats is a junk rat man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, Sish, I wanted him attention. <laughs> it's been awfully quiet for rats. Yeah. Mm, no. I thought rats came from junk rats, no? No, what the fuck? No. <laughs> <laughs> rats is actually a short form of my first username. Like when I first created my, my first ever account, Yahoo account I created. So it is like the shorter form of that. You take the first letter, the last three letters. So first three letters, the last letter, you still get rats. 
you used to go to yahoo chat servers and type in esl no Oh my god. <laughs> hey, I don't know what's the rare money's deal, but he's been mentioning all of this. Are you into that shit, man? I'm just curious. <laughs> hey, you never know. Hey, never sir, know. please. How do you express disappointment, Raj? Do you say rats? Uh, like, you, know, you can't be like, oh, rats. You Good add, rats. You add S yes instead of the Z. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, rats. <laughs> That's good work. Yeah, oh. no, but talk. I mean, uh, while we talk, we still talk about Overwatch heroes. The first hero I played in the open beta was Reaper and Soldier. Uh-huh. And then when the game first came out, like I was actually awake at four thirty in LXG when the game came out, and you know the server had that issue, like it didn't let you inside, like it didn't let you in the game. Everyone was having problems and stuff. So or I, I waited for like half an hour, and then when the game started, I got out a quick play. I picked off my Soldier. Everybody else picked off, you know, your Hanzos, Junkrats, Widowmakers, Bastions. There was no tanks. There was no healers. We lost that game pretty badly. I was wondering what the fuck. Okay, so I was actually kind of I tilted. I tilted after the first game. So I was after that. I was like, okay, let me try healers. So I started Zenyatta. I started a game of Mercy. I'm not gonna lie. I played a game of Mercy. Didn't like the hero. And then I switched to Lucio. I was like, ah, this guy. He he looks cool. He can roller skate and shit. So I saw. I spent like some half an hour watching Lucio videos, how to play him and all that. Then I just played Lucio and stuck on to Lucio. So everyone in the community started calling me, "Oh, you're the Lucio main." Okay then. And that's when you know everyone had that hero mains and stuff. They called themselves, "I'm a McCree main. I'm a Hanzo main. I'm a Genji main." So and so. But I don't believe in that system. I mean, yes, that could might be a top hero, but I mean, I I'd, I'd rather call someone. I don't get like, one thing, though, dude. Yeah, how do you tilt in your first game? Like how does that nobody, even happen? Nobody, no. That's the thing. Nobody. <laughs> see, in the beta, everyone picked their roles. We had proper two healers, two tanks, and two DPS. That was in the open beta, okay? Where everybody had access to it. When the game came out, everyone wanted Junkrat, Hanzo, Bastion. That that was like I don't know. And Genji, of course. And they didn't even play properly. Like I picked Soldier because like you know, they played now also properly. But I think... <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. So I mean, I just switched to Lucio as a healer because nobody picked healer then, and everyone called me Lucio main. I don't like the fact that you know people call you as a hero main. Like I know that's your top hero, but you're not a hero main. I mean, let's say I play Lucio, but I can also play other supports like Zen and Ana. I'm a that's support. That's a player. problem. That's a problem yeah. because yeah. even now, what's happened with me is because I play Ana most of the time. Uh, it's almost like you know you don't you don't really play anything else. They are, people assume that so that's actually a. Mm, need to get out of that mold. I agree with you, Mani. Same as the case with me for Mercy. Yeah. So, no. And no. Uh, what? But if you think about it, if you are good at some uh, at some particular hero, does not necessarily mean you will be good at all the heroes. Like uh, Genji to me is always going to be tricky because I just can't get his uh, dynamic. I mean. Uh, for me, that Genji gameplay is is very confusing. Although one v one, I have defeated all the Genji players <laughs> until now. <laughs> That's actually true. He be, you beat me in Genji, right, Sunny? That one v one. Genji and Makri and Tracer. Yeah. Oh no no no! <laughs> beat me in Tracer. I beat you in Makri. I lost. I lost. No, no, no. At Genji and uh, Winston because I couldn't do play those heroes properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, yeah, I keep forgetting. I think we'll have to give, get back to that footage on Raz's channel. It's there on, it's there on stream. <laughs> yes, it's there on stream. I just got to check it out. Yeah. So, so if you are good as, uh, let's say, if you take uh, even Stanky, he's he's a very good Lucio player. But at this, at, at some times when it's required, he changes. Obviously. Yes, he does. Yeah. So, but. He calls himself as a Lucio main. So how, how does uh, how does that uh, I mean isn't isn't that good to have like one uh, like king of something and uh, not be jack of all kind of thing? See, I mean, for me, if you ask, when he says he's a Lucio main, he's not Lucio main. He's a one trick pony Lucio. Yeah, yeah. But see, when you have that. certain roles like. Say DPS, tank, support, and uh, semi tank in the game. Mm. You're supposed to be mains on certain roles, not on certain characters. If you okay. main certain characters, then you'd be called one trick ponies. 
Like if mm. I play only Genji and not anything else, then I'd be called one trick pony Genji. Mm. Not not saying I'm a flanker main or or some mm. like a TPS main. Right, right. So it's better to be support main or tank main. Yeah, yeah if you like call that. yourself support main, you basically have to main more than two uh, champions or heroes in the right. support category. I mean, that was one of the reasons why, like, uh, like some the time between season one and season two is comparative off season. Like, I only played uh, Lucifer, and I used to play with uh, all all these guys, like you know, Ryu, Brutality, Formless, even Nabu. And I mean, even I, I kind of noticed it myself. I can't keep playing Lucio forever. What if suddenly there's a meta where Lucio is out of the pool, and you have yeah. someone like uh, Anna Zen combo or Anna Mercy combo? Lucio becomes utterly useless. So my one trick pony right there. Falters down and I'll be completely useless mm-hmm. for the entire meta. So I have to adapt and learn other heroes. So that's where yeah. I kind of started, you know, playing various heroes, whatever is needed, try and kind of like learn that thing. So I've actually, you know, gone in towards Anna Zen. I even played a bit of Reinhardt, Zarya, Soldier, of course, and a bit of Mekri here and there. So I'm actually kind of expanding my hero pool. And I think that everyone should actually do that. Like mm-hmm. if. You, if you want to go flex, if, I mean that's the flex thing. But if you want to be like a support player, you have to know your supports in and out. So I'm just trying to be like you know Jack of all trades, master of none, but better than some, right? I'm, I'm trying to go into that because that way, if hmm. a meta changes, I can adapt to that. You know, I'm, okay, one hero I can't play that hero because he's not in the meta. I can go to the other hero who I've played at and might still be in meta. See, it's not only a certain role. You need to know all the other heroes from different roles too. See, if you're playing only support and you play, for sake, you play only Zenyatta and Ana, and you know things what can certain champions do for limited thing, and you won't know what Rodog Hook CD is, you won't know what Reinhardt Charge CD is. You need to play each and every character in order to be good in the game. Basically mm, saying you true. need to know if you want to be Correct. good at the game, you need to consider all the factors, not only with certain roles or certain champions. Mm, true. Like the uh, to each hero and all. Yeah, when I play Ana, these flankers, Genji and Tracer, they usually come and you know, Winston. Uh, they they just get back and then they'll start putting bullets into your head unless you are able to sleep them or nade them and kill them and it's very difficult to sleep a tracer unless you actually played a tracer you don't know when they're going to the monkey uh, comes and puts a lightning rod in your hands <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I agree with Nabu there you need to be familiar with heroes right so mm. if we talk about uh, uh, let's say you're talking about tanks now is it is it uh, better to be uh, focusing only on tanks or uh, if, if you want to main the tanks? Or should you also have uh, knowledge about all the others so you can switch all the time? See, that's two different things, right? Maining tanks and getting the game knowledge are two different things. Right. You're maining a certain role. It's okay, you need to play all the tanks. Like for sec, you need to play Reinhardt, you need to play Rodog and Zarya and Winston. Mm. And if you want to be better at the game, not better at certain roles, you need to know all the other aspects too. For in case, see if you're playing a Reinhardt and you're good with being aggressive with Reinhardt, every time you charge in, if you have a good Ana on the other team, she's just going to sleep dart you. And if you are better at the game and you know she doesn't have a sleep dart, and then you charge in, it's going to be effective. That's my whole point. If you want to be better at the game, you need to know each and every aspect of the game. That includes map, that includes where the health packs are, that includes all the champions, yeah. all the CDs, all the ultimate timing, everything. Right. Actually, actually, if you have good map awareness, like you know where, the like as Sunabu mentioned, where the health correct, packs correct. are in the map. If you know that, then you know, you can always, you don't have to always depend on a healer. Let's say you're a DPS player who can't do selfie, like a Mekri or a Genji. And so especially good for like Reaper, man. Yeah, even Reaper, if you're far away from the healers, all right, you went in aggressive trying to create space for your team and it's, you know, you can't really get back at that. Like you can't get back on time. So, but you know, there's a health pack nearby that you can get. So you can go get that health pack and then you can, you know, continue on by creating space or whatnot. And you, and if you know the map really well, you know that at this point, there's a big health pack. At that point, there's a small health pack giving you 75 health. So it, you know, it all comes into play if you know this really well. Like, it's funny, but I've seen most of the players, like, 
basically players who play flankers such as Genji and Tracer, mm. they go in so deep and the supports have range, man, and they have like certain visibility on you and there are like so many buildings and stuff like structures in the map where they can't reach out to you and you go in deep dying like in Bangladesh or something and you call out your support saying you don't heal properly <laughs> and then you literally I need yeah, healing I need healing yeah and then oh, if you and, right <laughs> and also if another thing is when that person dies they'll actually you know, spam that voice chat and be like yo healers where the fuck is the healing yeah. <laughs> like they're gonna yeah, be it's basically being a negative attitude in the team. You doing a mistake, you going out of position, and you're blaming someone else who couldn't even help even if he could. That's the point, yeah. right? Like you need to know where your supports are. You can't just go ham in inside, go ham and be like, oh, I died, I didn't get healing. You're literally going in front of six guys and you're planning on surviving yourself. It, it's it's not possibility at all another uh, yeah another great uh, strategy that i have noticed is uh, people use uh, mercy as shield <laughs> yeah no not just mercy are you serious i mean yeah. not just i have seen nabu do that to life smack yeah <laughs> yeah no no, but it's not just the mercy alone. I've noticed that more, when you're playing solo queue, I've played a lot of solo queue, and when, I, when you play support, you always find the DPS baiting you out for no reason whatsoever. Like, I've seen I've seen a tank bait me out, and I'm wondering, a Reinhardt, okay? And he's like, dude, you have to put your shield up. And he has his shield, because he's actually stayed, uh, you know, just without his shield for like 10 seconds, and that'll get you up to like, you know, uh-huh, I think right, 1, right. 1600 charge, shield right. charge. He can just right. come up and put his shield, but no, I'm just, I'm trying to run away using my speed boost as Lucio, but no, I'm getting picked up, and this Reinhardt can put his shield up and probably save my life. And then I also had sound barrier. So, you know... I see teammates baiting each other out. That's one thing, you know, that is a difficulty in solo queue. And I think people should stop doing that. They should at least, you know, trust their teammates and just, you know, push on. Because without... Hey, man, trust... it's a team game. Okay, take one for the team and just see a few. No, like actually, that, someone... If you are taking one for the team and... So, there was this time when me and Anna were playing. Uh, I think it was a scrim or something. And she was getting picked off continuously because the whole other team was continuously aiming the Mercy because she was playing Mercy. And there was this one time where the, we were playing a control point, I think it was Lee Jung, and we had like 80 to 60 or something, a percentage of each team. We were like on 80. And like two of the guys rushed into the Ana, they literally chased her to the base, and we got like five of them killed in a Graviton and a Genji Blade, and we got the point and we won. And she was all being like, no one helps me out and no one like takes care of the healer. No, that's that's the right thing, right? When when you have a mercy, you need to play around her. Not only yeah. mercy, all the supports. If you when our supports are helping you out, you it's your job to help them out if when they are in trouble. Because what more can they do? All they can do is heal, and they have less damage, and they have less mobility. If you consider like certain champs like Zenyatta and Ana. Like, you need to take care of your supports too. And she was all like being triggered saying no one helps me out. And I told her, see, you took one for the team. And we got the point and we won the map. It's all about team mentality. Like, yeah. if one guy is dying and you're getting five kills out of it, it's like, it's like you're it's doing a good, a good job. Yeah, you're basically being a bait for us to win. It's like, you're doing more help than the actual DPS and tanks can do for the team. Basically being a bait. Right, right. I also have to add another thing about healers is the fact that, and I had to learn this the hard way, is if uh-huh. you want to play a healer and you cannot defend yourself at all, it's better if you just pick someone else. Mm. Right, right. But most of the mercies are, uh, I, recently <coughs> people have started shooting as mercies. They use that way. Yeah. Was it people charge the ulti faster. faster. Yeah. You actually do get you're out a lot faster with a mercy if you actually kill and shoot than heal. Mm, hey, mercy yes, out there, don't true. just start shooting around and instead of healing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I need healing. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying That's that as a mercy, mercy you ha- you're supposed to concentrate on shooting instead of healing, but there are times when you are with morons on your team. And as an example, the last games we were playing you and rats 
no one was yeah. killing the Lucio. Yep. So in the end, I took out my gun and just got rid of him. Another time when all the teammates are completely healed up, no point of having the healing beam on. And exactly, yeah. The damage, so boost. That's when the damage the, boost on. Damage boost is there, but what if no one else is getting the other team, the opponents? Then one has to take out the booster to get the ult quickly because ultimately at the end that helps a lot. But dude, one Rezzing really bad right thing is no one fucking reses, man, in comps. <laughs> they don't it's press the Q to play. or they die, they just die. <laughs> No, the mm. thing is, so I think the they thing. end up waiting for the perfect POTG moment. Yeah, that's yeah. stupid. I mean, that, that's I feel like Rahul, after two, three people are dead, just raise, uh, resurrect. Baby. No, but then like, it does I mean, not no. make sense to res just one 200 HP no, player when everyone in. I mean, it depends on the situation. Depends on the situation. Exactly. 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 No, there are good reasons to do a one-man res. As an example, Hanamu at the first point and your Reinhardt yeah, falls down. Exactly, yes. There is yeah, nothing one, wrong one about resing your Correct. Reinhardt. There are high priority targets which yeah, one yeah, needs exactly. to always, no matter what, one ta- one uh, teammate is down because of a Bastion on a Reinhardt at a choke point, definitely res that no matter what. No, oh, Bastion would you... never res. If you no, talk about mercies, if... right? See, the whole point of picking the mercy is just going dry in comp. Like, you don't use your ults at all. That's called dry in engage. You just go in, you die, so that the mercy can come and rest. So you bait out other teams' ultimates or skills or whatever. So mm. that's the whole point of mercy. If you don't play around them, it's, it all comes to playing around certain champs. If you pick Sombra, you need to play around Sombra. If you mm-hmm. pick a dive comp, you need to play around your mission. Whenever he jumps in, the Tracer and Genji are supposed to target the target which Winston is targeting. And talking about Mercy, like, if you have a Mercy and you know she can revive five of the other people and you get picked off solo and she has to force her ult on you, it doesn't make sense. And later on you blame the Mercy saying, oh, you did a one-man res, you could have done a five-man res. Hey man, no one told you to go in and die, you could have just stayed alive. Exactly. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. I keep noticing this thing. Dabu keeps calling the heroes champs. Is it because of the paladins? That's... No, oh, that's because I played Dota this. and League before this, so everything's <laughs> champions in there and not here. Yeah. <laughs> so you should definitely play Quake champions then. Ah, uh, no. Quake champions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, I am looking forward to Quake though. No, I'll play. Like, I don't mind trying it out, but I'm not going to play like this, is, this is like Wonder saying, Oh, I don't like Overwatch, but I just want to get to Grandmaster. Then I'm okay. Then I stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude, that's so soft. Wonder is Rats' his best friend, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, Rats keep talking about him so much. It's like so fascinating. He, he has okay. really improved on his uh, Hanzo yeah. a lot. Hanzo. Yeah. Yeah. Hanzo. <laughs> so, now to take note, Hanzo, okay? <laughs> that, even that's the mentality in solo queue, right? So you go into solo queue mm-hmm. and you have five others playing solo. The whole point of solo queue is trusting your teammates. And if one guy picks Hanzo, it's like it's like sudden tilt. It's like the whole team goes out. They go check your profile. <laughs> they check your win rate. Yeah, They'll yeah, be yeah. like, oh, you have 30% win rate. You're not going to do shit in this champion. Even though he plays, he has good aim. He can pick off guys. And the whole team just tilts even before the big game yeah, starts. Yeah. And the one more point I've noticed in solo queue is they tilt right after the first half. Man, the oh, two yeah, halves of sure. the game. Like you can yeah. do wonders in the second half. The first half you get royally destroyed. You can do the same thing with the other team too when you're right. attacking. And they all go like, oh, yeah. this game is done. They have to start trolling. And, and then they start mentality. trolling. Yeah, they that go, mentality is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. just stupid. I remember I was uh, I mean, I mean, was in a game with Boom Chica. We were playing competitive. And Real Money was just listening in on Discord for some reason. And uh, what happened was uh, I was playing the Ana. I was playing the healer. And... Uh, uh, so I'm healing as much as possible and the uh, Reinhardt kept telling, you know, I'm not getting, when, when he dies. So I was the only healer there at that time. And they, they I'm healing as much as possible and, and uh, I'm defending as much as possible. But when Reinhardt pins you, he pins you. And uh, it, it becomes difficult. I mean, I, I find it difficult to pin, uh, I mean, to sleep a uh, uh, charging Reinhardt. I've done it few times. But I'm still getting to know the mechanics 
and uh, uh, the rhinoceros kept screaming ana you don't heal you don't heal you don't heal and and then we lost the uh, f- first two uh, matches and then we had uh, two two more ma- i mean one more cho- chance Around. left yeah one more round left and then uh, uh, after that uh, i think uh, that guy left uh, rhinoceros and someone else went rhinoceros and that dude kept his shield up and he was uh, i mean he was playing on like an actually he was not charging in like a moron all the time and then we won the next three matches it was it was a beautiful game and then i was the only one who got the card in the end and then the boomchi was like look 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 at them tell them who was not healing you who was not healing you so at that time <laughs> that's one of the funny part no see i see all of this rainart mains who keep charging in and think they are like some big shot dps with big hammer <laughs> no, no. and they think and they think they can do more damage than a dps and they call out saying i need more he- heal than the dps see there is a role you are a tank no matter what game you play a tank is a basically a meat shield you need to stand in front of your team mm-hmm. be a meat shield and let the other carries who have more damage than you can do damage right you can't go in and expect everyone to like Correct. they beat you heal you 24/7 it doesn't work if you are a healer your job is to heal if you are a dps your job is to do damage great is dps's definition is damage per second tank means you need to be a meat shield in aggressive yeah it's good when you go in you take a winston that's aggressive he can jump in jump out back even whenever it's like 6 second cd man you can go in and come back again 6 seconds it doesn't take long Right. but if you are a renart your whole job is to hold the shield and it comes to other people too and you pick a renart when you have a soldier and a mechri right so they they, yeah to hit scan so that they stand behind your shield and they can kill people if you have a kenji and a tracer on your team who are pretty good you don't go and pick renart and say that oh i'm doing my job you guys aren't doing the job <laughs> right right so the okay just let let me just get back to the point i was talking about using the support as shield this game i'm talking about is when namu was streaming and uh like <laughs> spec was playing uh, mercy and you were you were the I, i think you were the soldier or genji one of those two characters okay. and then and then the other team's uh, soldier you know altered and he started using his uh, uh alt and then he was locking onto all the people and then I noticed you just went behind life smack and <laughs> she died and then you were able to escape. Okay, I I can defend to that point, okay. If okay. I die, healer can't do much. If healer dies, I can do at least a little. So okay. I'm right in my case. <laughs> so <laughs> but I don't isn't know. It, uh, isn't it better to the healer could have rest. Yeah, she didn't have rest. Uh. Uh-huh. Mm. Then yeah, then But that's the actually, correct thing to do. Actually, to defend myself, <laughs> I had ninety-five percent. Ninety-five percent is a long time. Okay, yeah, five times. Okay, okay. so first of all, no, no, no. I have to hash this one out. You know how fast it is for Mercy to get her out. I don't know, but I don't know. But fast, I know about man. how you get Unless her out you faster. I think we also need Rahul in this discussion sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should. Raul is actually mercy deep inside dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I See, that, not, that's he's not only seal it's not, not only like pulling Anna's leg me being uh, me making her a meat shield and like waiting her to be dead and me doing something it's about being like smart in the gameplay right when you are in game you need to be smart sometimes when you are confident on yourself well you can do something when one of your teammates fall it there is no doubt in waiting one of your teammates to die and picking up more that, that's that's, that's only yeah the, you, you need to be smart in game not just play all aim no brain <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, it doesn't work like that no 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 right. but in Some, the sense of like Yeah, I, I have to say that there are a lot of good healers, and sometimes when a good DPS gets picked off, but the healer stays alive, you actually end up doing a lot more difference than if the DPS would have stayed alive. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying I don't. I didn't bait you. I was just saying 
in general if you are beating someone else and you know you can do more than the other guy it's always a good thing right right i'm just defending myself man <laughs> <laughs> welcome to court room overwatch right <laughs> what is it aaj ki adalat oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I can give you an example. If yeah. there are two guys left on the payload, that's Reynard and the Lucio, and they're just charging <laughs> in into the Lucio to kill them. If the Reynard lets the Lucio die and he stays alive, he has 500 HP, man. He can stay alive longer than the Lucio. That's the. It goes. It goes the same way around for the Lucio. If Lucio is good with juking and running around and skating around the payload, he can bait out the Reynard to die and he can stay alive so that the other team, like the other push team, comes out. and they actually defend the point it all comes to situation you can't really say that i wanted her to be baited i mm. just i was just defending myself as she was defending herself it's just that it's in game sometimes you do some mistakes or some plus like points where you can't really call. say yeah judgment call you can't really say i did that on purpose it was just my instinct saying save yourself so that you can do better next time okay cool so this this the uh, uh, this bleeds into the topic that i want to talk about uh, g- game sense so we will get there uh, but before that uh, i want to talk about uh, hero favorites among all of us all so uh, life smack what are your favorite heroes to play and uh, i'm not talking about main you know you might like uh, you might like uh, diva more but you end up playing uh, uh you know mercy or something let's listen yeah and this is the question <laughs> my problem <laughs> is ever since i joined the overwatch community i've been put in this neat little box of a healer and right it gets frustrating to play a healer and uh, especially lately there's nothing more that i would love to do than playing sombra aha uh-huh. I think Radzi mm. sees sees that. Radz also has a similar favorite. <laughs> yeah, I mean no, like for me I don't have a particular hero favorite. I mean a lot of people have asked me this before I tell them I don't have a particular favorite, but if you ask me for like any three heroes, like and I I always choose my favorites based on Okay, let me are. let me stop you there. I will tell All you I right. also make it easier. any hero that you like also could be based on the background story and yeah, uh, character design yeah, and I everything yeah i was actually get, i was actually getting to that so cool. like the three heroes that i like based on the their background story their mechanics and you know just the way they look in general like for me lucio cuz i like his mechanics you know the you, you don't know, you don't see in most games you don't see you know a dj an international celebrity roller skating on walls switching between <laughs> speed sound telling everybody use music i'm going to use music to heal you up and you know has that i mean i like that kind of design of lucio and uh, the, som i like sombra because her background story is actually pretty nice and the way she is you know like full hacking like ev- ev- she's doing ev- everything she does in the lore the story of overwatch is for her own personal benefit right, she doesn't right. give a shit about uh, talent or what not Right, so that's actually pretty cool. And my favorite hero in terms of looks and story is Reaper Man because that guy. I mean, you can't really say Reaper's a bad guy because even he's been through a lot of shit against uh, you know Soldier and all those boys. Mm, mm. So you can't really tell if you know Reaper. You can't. I I actually been going through the story between Soldier and Reaper, and I've gone through some old comics. And mm. Reaper says this line: "They left you to like." He actually tells this line to Anna, one of one of the other characters. Tragic. He says they. Yeah, you know, he left. He tells her that they left you to die, and they left me to suffer, right? And he's referring this to John Morrison, so that is Soldier Seventy Six and yeah. Overwatch. Yeah, so you, it makes you want to think: who is right and wrong in this situation? Why did Blackwatch, you know, you know, rebel against the actual Overwatch squad? So it makes you want to go deeper into the lore and find out what's actually happening. That's why Reaper is like one of my favorite characters. Reaper also, is a rasura. Oh, dude, mine is Genji. Down and down. I was, I was going to say Genji. Reaper is a rasura. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, even though I suck at Genji so bad, it's just I just love ninjas, dude, and the sword. I don't yeah. know what it, it's. Okay. Just Genji, cool. Genji's backstory is also pretty awesome, man. Like, if like, if you oh. ask me, I always uh, tend to like uh, characters or heroes who are tech, like mechanically, yeah, uh, really mechanically awesome. hard to play. and a lot yeah, of people Genji. don't play it right so that would be kenji because it's 
There are different types of Genji players. One who would stay behind, farm out their ult, and they go in and kill five of them. And there are different like game that. style they where they don't ahead. use their ults at all. They go in and they still end up killing people. So mm -hmm. if you ask me, I like the Cyborg Ninja. Yeah. Hey, yeah, who yeah, doesn't want to be a Cyborg Ninja, man? I Come swear, on. like cool. he's the coolest <laughs> no one hero. Just only thing he sounds I like a really girl. Mada Mada! I need it. Mada Mada! He doesn't sound great, they should have got a different voice actor for him. No, I, like I, like, I like Genji and uh, Hanzo, if you ask me. Yeah, Hanzo sounds way better than Genji. The animated, yeah, animated yeah, short also was helpful. I think. Yeah, and I, yeah. No, I mean, I think I think what Blizzard should have done is like most of these characters, they have skins that shows them of their past. Like they have a young Hanzo, a young Genji, an old, a, a young soldier, a young Reaper, a young Anna. I think Blizzard should have also changed the voice packs for those characters, making them sound like they are young, not that they are old. If you actually listen to what Anna says in her yeah. when she's, uh, Captain Amari, she sounds like an old hag. Like what the fuck? Same yeah. thing goes to Soldier and Reaper. Reaper sounds like the devil man in his origin skin. <laughs> like, what the fuck? And even Genji sounds like a cyborg when he's young Genji. So I think Blizzard should have at least changed the voice packs, made it even uh, more, you know, better and stuff. It would have hey, changed change whatever have you want for, for Lucia and Reaper. Don't come to Genji. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like where the way Goon. he is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go next. Uh, no, no, wait, wait, okay, wait. Go ahead. Let, me, let me ask Goon first. Okay, go for uh, it. When it uh, comes to about fun play, I love playing Junkrat and uh, Symmetra. I know people <laughs> hate, hate Junkrat. Hey, Symmetra is awesome. But for, fun awesome. Time, yes, but for fun time, I love playing Junkrat and Symmetra, and especially combined with Rail Money Zana, especially Rail Money Zana because he loves boosting me whenever I'm Rail Money, and I go like, burn, baby, burn. Boosted <laughs> Junkrat. <laughs> Uh, uh, Boosted Symmetra. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's boost, awesome, dude. Boosted yeah. Symmetra with Especially the shield. Especially on uh, and control shield points. Oh man, that's like awesome. And especially the I can wall arch on defense. That's one of my favorite places. Arch. And so real money style. When it, when it comes to <laughs> comp, I prefer the healer part of Mercy or uh, Reinhardt. Just okay. for the obvious reasons. Wait, wait, I want to know why you like Reinhardt. Uh, for the obvious reasons, because... Uh, but yeah, a German. <laughs> German uh, engineering wins. Mm, yeah, definitely. I love Odin, <laughs> I like so Reinhardt. That could be one of the reasons, but uh, basically <laughs> for his uh, shield, so that we can push towards the object. Because he likes Reinhardt because he carries always carries protection with him. And for this reason, for this reason, I am out. He likes Mercy because she always carries a wand with her. Oh, snap. Okay. This conversation officially went too dirty. Life make if you can please sleep dark, real money. Okay. Real money, tell me, tell me who do you like? I know real money is Farah. Uh, actually, my favorite right now is Anna, Farah's mom. It started yeah. off with Farah because uh, yeah. because of the yeah rockets, right? I I actually so loved the so rockets in Quake, so that was a natural transition for me. Um, right. And uh, Anna, I started again. A lot of the things I you know watch I've, I've been inspired by Ashwat. I'm not a fanboy, but uh, he's probably one of the better guys in India. Uh, and then now, more recently, I've been playing Bastion. He's, Bastion is actually very good if you play him. Even with a decent amount of skill and judgment, Bastion can absolutely devastate the opposite team. Right. Especially with the recent buff. So, Correct. Yeah. So, no, I, I got this that you like to play them. I love Ana and Farah. So, so if, you, if you think about the background story and uh, all those things. Uh... Background story, yeah, lore. Like, who's your favorite lore, f like lore friendly I character? I think I like I like Monkey. I like Winston a lot. Oh, Winston, even I like Winston. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that uh, rise of the planet of the apes kind of uh, story. He's like Caesar, no kind of little bit, I guess. But he didn't support them. He actually didn't want it to be like that, so he left this. You know, he left the moon and came to Earth. Came back to Earth to join. I don't think he left. He was there with. 
the scientist. I forgot his name. Harold so, Winston. Yeah, so he was basically his uh, sidekick or whatever. So he was there with him for some shit. No one explained that. So from there he came back and joined Overwatch when yeah. he was young. So yeah, he correct, left correct, the moon. Yeah. So basically it might be a story like when you send an animal to the space for the first time and it happened to be he they sent two retards which is the scientist and the monkey <laughs> to the space <laughs> to suffer <laughs> and and some shit happened being that scientist was uh there might there was a theory saying that the scientist brain is in Winston some shit happened to him or something like that but i'm not really sure this no. was really early when the watch yeah. was really new and the people were saying that that's why he is known as Winston cuz he took his uh, scientist's last name there might uh, be a possibility that they both mm, are the same person inside a monkey's well, body it could it could be yeah no because from what i read in that yes yeah, site was uh, it was actually a group of scientists that went there to the moon to do some experiment with a group of monkeys so some shit went wrong basically they mm-hmm. basically trying to develop intelligence in the in the monkeys so making them smarter right. and winston was one of them like how reaper and soldier super soldiers they had like some super monkey yeah. powers or some shit like that all right so what happened is they all became smart they became self aware and they thought they were being slaves so the monkeys kind of did a riot basically a planet of the apes kind of story mm-hmm. but what happened is winston did not like that and he basically escaped with the help of harold winston because they thought i mean the scientists thought that if winston did not join up with them they would kill him as well so the basically the scientists sacrificed his life to send winston back to earth back to the overwatch team so that he can you know help in the advancement of overwatch and science and stuff maybe he and- winston just followed tracer's booty Oh my god Winston and so Tracer small. are like dirty so money so platonic no oh no <laughs> the dirty money is correct <laughs> dirty money <laughs> I mean that's such a pl- platonic that. relationship and you're just making it wrong <laughs> Sorry okay good Li- Life's like your your favorite lore wise hero Uh lore wise I would say it's definitely Hanzo Aha uh-huh. So Why you have to Hanzo? admire a man who stands his ground. Really, Hanzo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, At least in the Lord. He was. He believed in <laughs> his own thoughts so much that he didn't hesitate to try to kill his own brother. So and he's... even after being reunited, he still stands his ground and is convinced that it would have been better if Genji would have remained dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't agree to that. That's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. But now Hanzo's changed, right? I mean, in the oh, comic, they showed stubborn. Hanzo with the. I mean, they showed Hanzo with a new hairstyle in the comic. I think it was a Christmas comic where. Uh, yes, he but a uh, hairstyle doesn't change a person. No, no, but but I think Hanzo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is Hanzo might have changed after the events of what happened in that Overwatch cinematic dragons. I think that's what happened. So I, th- I think that's you know. Probably, you know, Hanzo still stands his ground, like his to his morals and stuff. But in but that he's case, probably... even Genji does, right? Because I mean, he hasn't changed. Yeah, he's still his playboy self, hmm. but he's but he's a cyborg. So cyborg ninja for the win. <laughs> playboy, playboy. What playboy is this? Like no, he old... used to be, no, he used to be when he was in his mercy past. You no, know, not the mercy connection. No, in his past, apparently, like from what I read, it's even there in the character biography in the website. uh genji used to be this like see they were part of the shimada club the shimada you know cl- criminal empire or something like that and even though hanzo was the guy handling it genji was the guy who was carefree basically just chilling out in life doing playboy things you know spending money left right etc and that's what you know that's why the hanzo versus genji fight happened and it genji was like, was, no it wasn't it was for that killer. that thing was uh, their father had stories about Overwatch saying they can do good to the world and Hanzo didn't believe in it and he had to put a stop to Genji in order for him not to go for the opportunity in joining uh what's that Overwatch which So which Hanzo's technically basic, a bad guy. No, he's not a bad guy. They technically they both are not a bad guy. Yeah, right. they are, Hanzo is a traditional guy who believes in his clan's motive and welfare of their clan and he wanted uh hmm. it might be a shit like uh, genji wanted so his hanzo... own plan to follow overwatch and hanzo saw something which overwatch was doing wrong that's why it call comes to blackwatch right they hate overwatch 
not uh, as same as Overwatch HD them, because so, no one really knows if Overwatch is good or Overwatch is bad. So why Hanzo does Hanzo a... seem like uh, Itachi from Naruto? So no, 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 that's what I'm saying. Hanzo, no, Hanzo no, is no. very he... uh, close to the Uchiha clan. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like that. So yeah. there is some backstory oh, which but, they will reveal. But but uh, not, uh, but uh, not Itachi. Do not Itachi. That guy is too uh, cool. I want to know Itachi something. Like is... Everyone everyone said they like certain characters according to lore and what they play. Right? I want to know how they ended up being playing characters. Like I want to know the background of it. Like who was. involved here on the podcast like what okay. do you mean exactly like how i mean you start i mean like uh, yeah how do you start playing certain character and becoming a main on the certain what's the background of about you becoming a main in certain character which you play oh, now okay i think it's oh. just you become good at one character you like it and you play it okay no oh, for uh, me i was we will, i we was will... forced into that main <laughs> i can confirm i was forced we into will... that main because no, nobody picked healer man in the quick play games and the game came out sadly I okay 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 I'll, i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing we will we are getting into this topic what uh, nabu said before that uh, let's say you know we are talking about uh, how hanzo and all there is some kind of back uh, background story and uh, 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 from what explanation we just heard it sounds like something like uh, ochia clan let's talk about uh, Uh, an inspiration from another uh, character called uh, Baymax from Big Hero Six. We have an inspired. Oh yeah, ah, that fat in. guy. Yeah, <laughs> we have an inspiration is, uh, from that coming in. Uh, yeah. Orisa. Yes. So. Orisa is a new tank. Oh, Orisa. Yeah, she looks terrible. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, but. But. Uh, given given her abilities uh, seems like she might be uh, a, a very viable character to play mm, she is a viable character but as soon as the character was launched me and anna downloaded ptr and we went into the game she is see for a tank you need to be strong like as a mid shield and but orisa yeah. is kind of a kind of a weaker tank and yeah. tracer took like one whole uh, Recoil to kill Orisa, bring her down to like 50 HP. So tell me something. The Orisas as take as much damage as the head. Dirty money, man. No, don't no, seriously. No, I think it's because she's she's got such a big body, right? So yeah. as Anna, I can sleep her from a mile away because she's like, I don't know, as big as a Maruti Swift or something. <laughs> <laughs> if she if her body also takes as much damage as her head, then no, I have to suppose that won't be the case. She, she. They need to do something about her defensive uh, style. If you ask me, she, she, she kind of look weak when she's taking damage. Like she was getting down to zero health, like pretty fast. Yeah, But yeah. If I you take, that, yeah. yeah. If you take consideration into her skill set, it's really yeah. mechanically strong. I can do a lot of shit. You don't need a Zarya if you have her. You can. You don't need to wait. Uh, wait for Zarya to get her alt up so that you can. Like use graviton into them. You just have a mini graviton where you can use it once in fifteen seconds or something. And the shield is very powerful, twenty seconds, right? Yeah. Even yeah. our alt range is too long and it's too powerful. I I have to clarify something up about the Risa. It's the same sombra situation all over again. Um, everyone says now that there will be a Risa main, the same thing as when sombra. Went out in PTR, and 90% of people right away stopped playing her because 90% of people do not have enough brains to comprehend how to actually use this hero. Hmm. Right, right. The other day, uh, when Ascendancy was uh, screaming, ah, uh, no, not Ascendancy. I'm not sure which team was that. Nabu was playing. Uh, uh, Sombra. Sombra. Yeah. And, oh yeah, uh, we were watching that. I remember. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you were going, and you were building your ult, and you would vanish, and you'll just go back, and then immediately ult, and people just charge in. That was like uh, th- 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 that. To me, seems like what Sombra should be doing. Yeah, was, that's the whole thing. See, that's exactly if the you, point of Sombra. Yeah, and she charges out pretty fast. So any, 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 any hero you pick, mm-hmm. a, like an off-meta hero. For sake, you take mercy. 
or you take Sombra, or you take someone like Bastion. You need to play around certain champs if you pick uh, champs like this, or heroes like this. You should take a Bastion, your whole team's job, like Bastion does more damage than any other DPS. So your whole team's job is to play around Bastion to keep him alive, keep him exactly. safe, keep, make, make him space. So if you play Sombra, all a hull charge is like you can charge your ult in like 15 seconds. So the map we were playing on was King's Row and uh, the whole idea is you have the bigger health pack which is on your right or left and the whole team just takes damage uh, intentionally and you go take the health pack again and again so in yeah. order yeah whoever takes the health health pack which is hacked sombra gets her ultimate charge so Very you good. can build her ult up in like some say what, some know. 20 seconds instead of charging in and going in and dying doing nothing so yes, you build up nice. your ult and you basically turn invis or throw a teleport pad in the middle of them and you just silence the whole team and yeah. that's one of the mentality right if you get silenced you have nothing else to use other than your basic uh, mm -hmm. skill set which is like yeah. hitting normal hits or healing not even healing you can't switch if you if the Lucia on speed boost he, he, he stays in speed he's boost, permanently yeah. on speed boost so that's the whole thing you charge in your ult you go in you EMP blast you just rush in and take the point and you keep doing it again and again and again so if you take certain champs which need certain criteria you need to play around them if you don't play around them it doesn't really work out it, it's not like you. It's not like someone was not like soldier. You can sit behind and do damage. Her whole the reason she has so good ultimate is so that people play around her. Mm. Even if you see all uh, Apex tournaments and all, when they pick Sombra, they they wait out till you get Sombra's ultimate, or they don't charge in at all. Sometimes yeah. what happens, people think that oh she she comes into DPS uh, category, she can do more damage. We'll go in. Uh, we were playing the other day, we were playing, I think it was Walskaya, and wa we defended the point, the first point, we didn't let the other team have it, so we were attacking, and this guy picks up Sombra, and I we, I think it was me, Anna, and Raj playing 3OQ, and this is not some low tier game, okay? it's like high diamond 3-3 or something, uh, and I even explained him what to do, I told him like you have hack this health pack, we'll wait out, we'll go in when you have your ult. And all he was doing is go invising in, going in and, and trying to hack the Reynard shield. And I was telling him it doesn't work out like that, you need to charge a EMP, it's much more effective than you going in and trying to like uh, hack the Reynard shield, it doesn't work like that. Right, right. It all depends on when, when you pick a certain off-meta champion, you need to play around it. If you not only off meta, champs like Sombra, then uh, like even if you play dive comp meta, you need to play around dive comp meta. Like you need to wait out till the Winston jumps in, then it's the job of Tracer and Genji to like talk around with them and aim the same target. If three guys are aiming one target, he's gonna die for sure. Correct, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So we are delving into the topic of game sense here and uh... Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Asura? When it comes to game says, how can one improve? Um, you always have to keep the healers alive. Number one, have to have like uh, uh, you have to know what your team is doing. Basically, there has to be communication. Right, communication. And okay. Yeah, that's the number one thing because uh, that's the thing, right? In solo queue, people don't really uh, communicate, but if you're good at it and and you and you know it's at a higher tier people automatically start like uh what do you say um supporting each other like without even speaking so right. you roughly have an idea of what people are going to do that's the thing as long as you know what your role is and you play your role properly and you know where your team is especially if you're a healer you should always have an eye on where everybody is every single person and i really suck at that so I don't know. It's so, just, I, uh, just I want to add points to this. When it mm -hmm. comes to game understanding, it's a 6v6 game, right? So you have uh, two sets of each category. So that's two DPS, two tanks, and two healers. It's not the job of both the healers to just keep healing. Like there is one healer who does damage, one healer who takes care of the tank. Basically yeah. doing damage is helping out the DPS. So that's the same thing. Uh, if you take Zenyatta, his his orb should always be on the tracer or the Genji, like or uh, yeah, not on the yeah, tanks, exactly. cause not on the tanks, cause 
Discord Orb doesn't do that much healing which Ana's Grenade or Mercy's Beam does, right? So, mm -hmm. so there's two sets of each characters and like you should play around in such a way that everyone has certain roles, not the roles of what their characters can do. If you take two tanks, a Reynard and a Rodog, Rodog, Rodog can do more damage than a DPS can, right? So yeah. your whole job as a road dog is to kill people, not stay around and being a meat shield. Exactly, exactly. So your job as a Reynard is to be a meat shield, not do more damage. That's the wrong perspective what people have. Like they think Reynard does more damage, no doubt about it. But you can be more effective when you be a meat shield for your team. Yeah. So if people get to know what their characters can do and what they need to do into the game, it'll, it's going to be a lot more different and a lot more effective especially in the Indian scene. So understand the characters uh, better? Yeah, understand the game knowledge better and know what your character can do, not only do what you're said to be done. And okay. stop watching unit lost videos. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to agree with his point strongly. Um, the problem with Overwatch that I see right now is a person picks a tank and he exactly thinks that he has to just sit and take all the damage. Okay. And with the healers, they think they have to only heal all the time. And DPS think, okay, I just stand and shoot and maybe I'll kill something. But the problem with it is... So have a game sense, you have to have at least a little bit of a brain. Right, right. And See, no, sometimes not only a healer, like, let's take as an example um, Zarya's Graviton Surge. And um, the whole team is in there. If you're a healer, you still should be able to pitch in and start shooting at them. Hmm. It's yeah. all about just using your brain. Using your brain and like uh, communication because no matter how well you play, your team can still fuck up, right? You need like... Mm. See, if you play any game, communication is the key. That's like the basics yeah. of the game. Like, you're playing with random five guys or six guys in your team and you you literally don't know who the fuck they are. You don't even know them personally or whatever. And you can't just go into solo queue and be like, oh, they're gonna read my mind and I can do whatever I want and they're still gonna follow me up. It's yeah, not gonna happen like that. It's the, basic <laughs> yeah. it's the basic sense of gaming, no matter what game you play, MOBA yeah. or RPG FPS. or whatever it is, FPS. They need to communicate. That's like the basic basic of basic things which you need to know when you're like but jumping But that's the into thing, gaming. I don't see people doing it, especially in solo queue. Uh, over tiers is just cancer, dude. High diamond and all that is fine. Like people, see, the, the, it's a reason why it's called low, uh, low elo or low SR or low MMI or whatever it is. Those people don't know how to play the game. That's why they are in that elo. Maybe uh, there might be some bad luck with some, some of them. They might not be so lucky with climbing up, but, but it's not the case of other 90% of the people. Mm -hmm. Like when you are in low elo, you can't expect them to play like uh, how Korean uh, Apex uh, tournament people play. You can't expect uh, uh, like 2.3 uh, SR uh, DPS men to play oh, like AKM oh, or yeah, IDD. Right. Or Seagull or all these no, pros. What they can, the basic thing they can do is get like a good, uh, you know, combination of heroes at least. Even that they do not do. It, that's why it's called Elo Hell, right? <laughs> like you can't literally blame them. Mm -hmm. Like you can blame yourself, you can't blame them. Wow. Well, what do you mean blame yourself? Like Blame yourself. You See, you have so much of knowledge of the game and you know what has to be done and you are still in that Elo. Bring yourself up, climb yourself up, be in a Elo which you would know which is good and pl start playing from there and get even more better than what you are. You can't just play the game blame in a low tier elo where you know it's a low tier and you know people suck at the game. So you, yeah, you can teach them up to a limit and if they're not agreeing to it you can't do anything else. They suck at the game. You can't you just have to deal with the fact that they suck. And if you know what better can be done in order to win, you need to bring yourself up and stop whining about people who are like that's the whole mentality of solo queue, right? Solo not whining. See, I, I'm just saying. No, I'm not saying. Problem. I'm I'm not I'm not like directing at you. I'm just saying 
like in general how people yeah. take solo queue is if they are stuck in like cold and they keep saying oh my teammates suck that's the reason i yeah, can't pull yeah, myself yeah. up <laughs> and yeah. you go on the com- and you go on the communities you see all these people they they talk shit more knowledge than even i don't know they they calculate <laughs> all the cds fucking even i don't know i play for a pro- i used to play for a professional team <laughs> yeah, even i crazy. don't know what the shit they were saying like even i was learning from them so it's like they know so much of shit why don't you put in your that so much sense in your game sense and climb yourself up play with your friends it's rather than playing with random guys and like always play right. the blame game instead of playing the game itself right so all of us playing with friends it becomes more of a blame game <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that means you don't have trust in your friends man Yeah, yeah, no, nothing. But... They just salty. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't trust you. That's even worse. So when Asura <laughs> drinks tequila, he doesn't add salt to it. He already oh has salt. God. He already has so much salt. <laughs> hey, what the PJ money? Please, <laughs> please stop the <laughs> PJ money. <laughs> No, I'm just saying general things which happens in solo queue, right? Like people say that they're stuck in their elo. You go all to these communities, forums, and things. They have so much of game knowledge, but they don't use it in themselves, and they try to make use it in some other random guy who don't, who don't even know yeah. him or know themselves each other. I what I'm suggesting or what I'm implementing here is you rather put. all those knowledge into your gameplay than putting it someone else's thick skull which is never going to work right 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 so uh, for now you know like uh, communication understand the game character and knowledge and uh, rely on uh, rely on the game knowledge that you have and uh, try to climb like, like with the help of all that and improve accordingly so uh goon actually had one point there uh, i saw him he was trying to come up with a point mm what i wanted to check was uh like how you mentioned play with your friends so people who are in your friend list you consider them to be your friends right mm, in a way yeah okay so any harm in uh, joining as a friendly i'm not saying com Because obviously it will not be possible for any low player to uh, play a rank of queue up with a high rank player. But uh, any harm up, in what? Any harm in uh, queuing up for a fun, quick play kind of thing? No, there is no harm. Like, see, if if you take me, I'm I'm master right now, and you, I don't know what your answer is. Let's say you are like uh, diamond. I you say you're cold or plat, and you can't queue me. you with me cuz you need to be in find the low range right and you still want to learn and all, i don't know about others but i've never said no to help so if you ask me to queue me together i would there are like two options for me like one get a different id which is of your same elo and like just play with you and carry you around or there is other way where i can explain you things how things work and how can you bring yourself up from low elo or i can just play a qp or a custom game with make a group of people like play together and teach you stuff and it comes all uh, like the main thing comes up to you with you is how you take things when i say something like mm-hmm. when when a guy is taking out his time and putting in efforts in order to someone else learn it comes to the other guy uh, yes i agree like you, yeah. yeah you need to put in efforts too it's not just I it's not going to it's gonna, not going to be like i'm not a genie if i say something you're going to improve right away you need to put in efforts too like yes, if you don't true. input if you don't put efforts you're not going to improve yourself mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. right right all right uh, and uh, any any like uh, thoughts about you would have uh, come across a lot of players uh, around what time to what time are those low low players more active more active so, yes because what i have observed is from like midnight till about 3 or 4 am on eu server especially and there are a lot of players who do not have that so uh, the team comp sense yeah so uh, so here's the thing uh, basically i play solo queue from like morning from 8 or whatever time i get up till like 12 so that's my solo queue time i solo i grind doesn't matter if i win or lose i just want to keep my skill uh, up to date 
And when I queue up with Anna and Raj, it's at midnight. We play around some like 11 or 12, and we play till 4 or 4:30 or 5 o'clock or whatever it is. So we just play till we feel like. So that might be three hours. What we've noticed is after three in the midnight, you always get trolls, and Anna can agree to that. We always notice this one thing, like first two hours, three hours of our game, it'll be peaceful. We get good teammates. We get players who play better than us. Who players don't play better than us, but they communicate. We end up winning. We win, win like strike, like ten games or whatever in the two hour span. Then we start losing when it hits like three o'clock time. Mm, okay. That's what. The, that's, what EU, that's what. Yeah, EU, that's what we've noticed, especially me, Anna, and Rats. Yeah, I hate those guys in EU, dude. Right? <laughs> soldier, soldier, bastion. I'll go soldier. <laughs> See, <they're> one, <laughs> one, it's not the only toxic people are the French ones. I don't want to be racist, but they are toxic. They are like the yeah. pinyons yeah, of how dude, ACA so region. Bad. There was this one guy who was, I was telling, we were playing Gibraltar map, my god, he annoyed the fuck out of me. Literally, Anna and Raz were telling me to calm down so much, but I was, I don't know what happened to no, me, I was just raging at <laughs> The thing is, uh, Gibraltar, we are attacking Epic Widowmaker, so I've been trying Widowmaker a lot lately. So I pick Widowmaker, and I'm the only guy who's doing damage, and these guys are doing their usual thing. And he's, the game's been started in like 15 seconds, he's already started blaming me. And I told him straight away, if you don't shut up, I'm not going to change Widow at all. So he didn't <laughs> shut up, I didn't change my Widow. Up until last point, he very kind of shut up. And I took Zarya, he started blaming me even more. And uh, there was this other guy who was telling me, bro, you're doing good, you do your own thing. And uh, it happened, like we got the point, then we went into defense. And he started again, I said, I'm going to pick fucking Hanzo if you don't shut up. No, and I'm he the... finally shut the fuck up and we ended up pushing the whole payload on the second round from like one minute till the end of the point. I just told him it's not that hard if you shut up fucking can play a lot more better. <laughs> yeah. that, that's no, literally dude, what... Once we had a French guy in our team, okay, and we were playing against the six stack French uh, thing in EU. It was me, uh, Rahul Ashwat, and uh, on our team there's one more French guy, okay. We basically wanted to carry him Till Diamond because he played with us the previous game and he joined our queue again. He just needed one or two games. And those guys, yeah, Ashwat posted the video also, no? Like, uh, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those that. guys, all those French guys started, uh, like, accusing us of aim botting, doing that, this. <laughs> and other French guys in our team only were shouting, except this one guy, and he's like, dude, I really apologize. Usually, French people are not this bad, but these guys are fucking. <laughs> Uh, well, that's so the thing, funny. you can't take few people and blame the whole community, but yeah, yeah. still, what? if you it's just come fun up with all the salty guys who are happen to be yeah. friends, you have to blame the whole community. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the I have to say, the moral of the story is, French guy who plays a healer past 12 equals toxic. Yeah. <laughs> so we <laughs> had all... this, oh, there's one more game where we had this uh, Mercy main, who had like some 100 hours of Mercy. And oh usually when, when, no, no, trust, like, this is a fucking hilarious story. So when uh, we, we finished, our, we were playing Route 66, so uh, uh, Route 69, I would say. <laughs> then we finished our first half, so we were attacking. He was playing Winston. Then he said, we kind of did bad on the last point, so we pushed it around two and a half point or something. Then yeah. he said, give me mercy, I'm good at mercy. And we don't uh, usually trust anyone else playing healer than Ana when we are 3 at queue. So it's basically whenever I go tank or uh, Raz go DPS, but Ana stays, sometimes she switches to tank or most of the time she stays healer. So we thought, okay, he has like some 100 R on Mercy, let's just give him Mercy and you play tank and we both will DPS. Mm -hmm. So uh, we didn't have a good feeling about that, but then uh, we agreed to First of all, the it. problem is you were playing tank I think I don't remember yeah. and Rats was, uh, yeah, was playing DPS. DPS and I was playing a uh, second healer oh yeah right so yeah, you're playing Anna yeah. right yeah yeah so he took you, mercy you, okay 100 hours on mercy man come on you literally spent half of your life on fucking like I'm not <laughs> playing, on a, right? yeah, playing on a <laughs> champ you need so to be at good. least good right like lit not good okay with the champ and the way he played was he's blaming everyone else except him 
Yeah, like he was pocketing some random. He was only like sticking with one tank or one person, or you know, he's like he doesn't even know what to do as a mercy healer, man. Like he was completely. Okay, they, they, this is the funny part. They have a widow, they have a kindi, they have a tracer, and they have a monkey. And you don't fly with mercy when they have a widow with the fara. Like doesn't matter if the widow is bad or no, you don't fly. <laughs> First of all, thing you don't pick fara when they have a widow. It's like just like easiest counter ever. And we have we had one more retard who were playing Farah. Actually, he was doing good, but you can't blame him. And mm. they have they had literally three DPS and one tank. They just keep on kept on jumping us, jumping us. And every time this guy dies and his body is falling from sky to the ground, <laughs> and he gets killed with the widow. I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? And he sh- and it happens to be him being a French and him just pointing the whole game being toxic. Oh. Uh, you, you, you. I, I think the beauty of it was also the first round we played, and he was playing Winston. And yeah, and he played a better Winston than Mercy. Playing, that round I was playing Mercy, and he would always jump way across the map and demand that I would stay just with him. Oh, what? He was basically asking for Whoa. Anna to be pocketing <laughs> Winston. <laughs> That's crazy. And, and you know what? He had like 60 hours on Winston. Uh, and literally a golden, only two and a heroes. Gun. <laughs> literally two heroes. He he played his whole life, which is hundred <laughs> hours on Mercy and sixty hours on Winston. Uh... Like, I am. I have never, you know, like that. That guy was the the French player. That Anna player was even worse. Like I actually wanted to add on to that, but you guys were going on with the story, so I was like, okay, fine, whatever. But that game with that Anna French player, the toxic guy, he didn't use his Nana boost. At all in our attacking point, yeah. he didn't even use it in our first defense. He only used it in overtime attack. That's it. He never even so used there are like defense. three rounds. So three checkpoints attacking. He didn't use his nano defensive three points. He didn't use his nano. He uses his nano on uh, an overtime push. So where we are pushing the payload from like 60 seconds from the base to the end of the point. He uses it at the end of the point where. We are like about to win the game. But the beauty of all of this was he wasn't planning to use his nano boost. He used it after he was resurrected. Yeah, also he also mentioned that hey, I want to use my nano boost only for combos, okay? So that's why he was continuously raging out at Nabu. There was a good there was a point in uh the first uh in our defense, our first defense, non-overtime defense, where I got a nice earth shatter on three people. I'm charging in. I even screamed on the team chat, Yo Anna, nano boost B, please, for fuck's sake. Like even these guys remember, they even told me to calm down <laughs> after that because I was getting tilted. Uh it was okay. that it was that bad <laughs> okay so we have talked about the game sense wise you know we, we've got some examples that we listed out right now uh the other thing uh, that i also think uh, that i personally think is also helpful is commending people uh, during the gameplay that i think has had a very nice positive effect and people who are tilting has, yes. tend to you know get back to, I mean, to normal and uh, that helps with the game uh, I think uh, Real Money uh, had seen this uh, with me. We were playing a game, and one guy was tilting, and we were like, "Okay, no problem. We can do this. We can do this." And uh, we ended up winning. We might, we, we we would have easily lost also, but the whole team uh, uh, mentality became a positive yeah. one. So, yeah. what are your yeah. advice against tilting? Or basically getting toxic. See, yeah. I want to add, which is uh, how people see solo queue. It's kind of stupid the way people approach a solo queue by saying, my team sucks. The whole point of solo queue is to make, uh, is to get yourself better. You know what I'm saying, right? Like Solo queue is for you to be better at the game. It doesn't matter if you win or lose games. So if you have that mentality and play, and you don't care about winning or losing, nor about your SR or MMR or whatever it is. It applies on, on the, all, all the competitive games. If you take solo queue as uh, improving yourself, you're never going to tilt. See, I can't say you're never going to tilt. People usually tilt when they have like a hard loss or something. If you tilt, just stop for a day. Like I have this uh, technique which I use whenever I solo queue. I stop a game if I lose right, right, right there. So if I'm starting my solo queue practice, like if say now, 
So if I lose the first game, I stop my solo queue right there. I don't play solo queue for the day. I start it the next day. So I play at Forsake. I for see if I win like six game in a row and I lose one. I just stop it for the day. That's how you get better with the game. So if you're losing a game, first game of your day, and you continue playing the same thing for the next game, your mentality is gonna be halfway through. It's gonna be like, oh, you're gonna lose this game too, and you're not. You're gonna be end up. You're gonna end up being like not performing well in the second game. So that's one of the tricks which I use in solo queue, which is you stop it whenever you lose a game for the day. It's like you don't play at all for the day. So you you will cap that losing at one game or uh... one, two, or three. So it depends. Max on person. Ma yeah, Max, for me, yeah, I, when I used to play League of Legends, I used to keep it on one. But Overwatch is a fast-paced game, which doesn't really affect your brain that much. So I keep it to three. Yeah. So whenever yeah. I'm solo queuing, if I win, if I lose three games, doesn't matter in a row or like the whole session. You win one in the end, you, you lose one in the end, you lose one in the middle, and you lose one in the end. So it doesn't matter when when you lose. So your loss should be minimum to how much ever you cap it to. So if you lose a game, you just stop playing for the day. You go play with your friends. You have fun. You play quick play. You play some other game, stream exactly. or whatever. Right. right and so. uh, another thing that you kept on repeating to me if you are a pure support player that mm -hmm. doesn't really feel confident in playing tank or dps in competitive don't solo queue yeah this is the point i always say to anna because uh, usually we three play three a queue right me rats and anna so whenever me or rats are busy or we have some streaming stuff to do she always ends up playing solo queue and one of the points for all the healer mains is doesn't matter even if you are a god support your play your whole job is to support even if you put 300% of your gameplay into playing and healing other stuff if your dps is not killing it doesn't make sense right right like yeah. like okay. you you can do how much ever, you can do like like say you you take the game more way more seriously than you take usually and you play your heart out and if your dps and your tanks are not doing shit it really doesn't work out so one thing to all the support means is you always play with duo, trio or more than like more people together rather than playing solo, which obviously gonna end up in a bad result. Something yeah. had to learn this season really harshly. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah, also, if I could add on like like three, as Nabu mentioned, if you lose if you lose like maybe one or two games of the day, stop, stop tilting. Take a breather. If you still want to play games, don't play Overwatch. Play something else. Maybe another single player, an indie game, whatnot. I mean, that's what I do. But if you're tilting in play Candy wh Crush. while the game is going on, yeah, even that works. I mean, it, whatever floats your boat, man. Like whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so if if you let's say let's say you're playing a KOTH map after the first round ended badly for you, you think you didn't perform and you're slowly going on the verge of tilt. Like what I do is I take a deep breath and I just stay positive with the team because I even notice that my team, some of them might be raging out and I just tell them, yo, calm down. It's okay. This is just the first round. We'll get them back. It's a, it's a race to three. It's okay. It's not like we've lost the game already. It's a race to three. So calm your tits. We can still win it because there's this one game of Oasis I played as soldier. I got 10 commendations because I had like some 60 plus eliminations. Plus, my team, all of them commended me and said, dude, you're the most nicest person I've ever met in solo queue. Like, holy shit, we need more people like you. And that actually kind of, you know, uplifted my spirits. And I was like, yeah, non-tilt. But, you know, that's just... And, and one more million. thing <laughs> is you cannot bring emotions when you get into the game. Like, uh, there might be shit happening in your life. It doesn't matter when you are in the game. Your whole mindset should be in the game when you're playing. Like if you don't concentrate on the game and you have something else running in your mind, like for say, for say family trouble or whatever it is, when you have that mentality in your, uh, in your head and you to try to go to solo queue, it doesn't work out. So unless you have a clear mind and start playing or if you have shit which is going on in your head, just deal with the shit first and then get into the game. Yeah, like enter the that game. That helps you in not clear tilting. Mind. Yeah, that helps you in not tilting. And Doesn't another matter. thing, never do a queue with someone you're seeing. That just spells disaster. What, what? Someone, you, someone you are? If you're dating, dating someone and that person uh, is also uh, playing that game, never do a queue with them. Why not? It spells disaster. 
You're just gonna be end up doing all the lobby dobby stuff and not keep playing the game. <laughs> or maybe it spills out. Uh, maybe it spills out in the real life. Oh yeah, I, I bet it's it. Definitely, man. Uh, I hey, those dumb guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna end it uh, over here. We had uh, a nice discussion about the game. <laughs> uh, uh, Life Smack Nabu, Rads, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we no hope worries, you can man. come back later. Do you, do you want to? Do you, do you have any channels that you want to let our listeners know? Uh, shout Wait, out what? to Nabu's channel. Drop the mic. Same here. Shout out to Nabu's channel. Uh, my. YouTube channel is youtube.com slash edxnabu so if you guys want me to I don't know man just go and fucking subscribe <laughs> <laughs> I can't be a seller <laughs> subscribe if you want to see the best mercy in the world there <laughs> okay, okay. you mean Rahul mm. uh... <laughs> the most patient mercy in wow, the world thank Rahul you. is the most impatient mercy in the world <laughs> who's Rahul Indulence, dude. <laughs> Even Indulence. Again, gave me blood pressure. I just sat next to him. I got blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Tension. All right, people. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. Today was a long episode. Uh, this was because uh, Rads had requested not to constrain the episode. Next time, we are going back to the 45 minutes uh, format. Uh, hope you guys could join in again next time. Uh, we might delve into more Overwatch or we might go into in other gaming topics. So, let's see you guys next week. Bye bye, guys. Say bye. Peace. Nice see you guys. Bye. Thanks, guys. Nice. Thank you. Bye. Thank So that was the third episode uh, this week. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be going back to the 45 minutes format uh, next week. Let's uh, see you then. Bye.